Okay, we're reuniting and uh, we're going to finish up 7-4. We're going to take care of the third and final factoring technique of this section. It too is dealing with a binomial like we had already mentioned to you. And the name that's given to this technique is the sum or the difference of two cubes. Now the one that we just came from, letter B in 7-4, was the difference of two squares. And when we factor the difference of two squares, we always get conjugates. A plus B, A minus B. X plus 4, X minus 4. Now we're turning the attention to another binomial. This one is entitled the sum or the difference of two cubes. So we'll come up here and uh, we'll take a look at some information here and see how this one is going to factor. I'm going to repeat. It's called the sum or the difference of two cubes. I'm showing you an example of each one. This one, a binomial. It's called the sum of two cubes. Let me mention any power of a variable where the exponent is a multiple of 3. Let me say it another way if multiple is bothering you. Any power of a variable where the exponent is evenly divisible by 3. Why 3? Because 3 is the significant exponent that means the same thing as cube. So as long as the exponent is a multiple of 3, or a number evenly divisible by 3, it represents a cube. So p cubed, p to the 6th, p to the 9th, p to the 12th, p to the 15th, etc. That would represent a cube. The number 8 is a cube. Now let me say it in one way as we define it. The reason why 8 is a cube is because the cubed root of 8 is an integer. Let's kind of put it in reverse. Think of a number which when taken to the third power or think of a number which when multiplied by itself a total of three times that would give us eight. The cubed root of eight is two. Because if we take two and take it to the third power we get eight. If we take two and multiply it by itself a total of three times. Two times two times two, that will give us eight. So because this is a cube, and eight is a cube, and we've got an addition sign in between, this is an example of the sum of two cubes. We also have a difference of two cubes. Difference y to the 6th is a cube because the exponent 6 is evenly divisible by 3. That makes that a cube. 27 is a cube. People, if we were to take 27 and factor it, 27 would be 9 times 3 which would be 3 times 3 times 3, 
which would be 3 to the third. The cubed root of 27 is 3, because if you take 3 and cube it, or if you take 3 and multiply it by itself a total of 3 times, you'll get 27. That's why 27 is called a perfect cube. So when we're factoring the sum or the difference of two cubes, the first term and the last term must be perfect cubes. Now I want to come over here to the board like we kind of did on the prior factorization, the difference of two squares, where we identified some very common squares. Well, now we're going to identify some very common cubes. Now, I'm going to be the first one to mention this. Most of us have not had practice as much with cubes as we have had with squares. So some of these numbers are going to glance back at you in terms of, I, I wasn't aware of those. Well, we will be aware of some of these. Let's start by looking at these. The numbers to the left of the equal signs. The numbers in black to the left of the equal signs. These are the perfect cubes. The numbers that you see in the parentheses houses to the right of the equal sign are their cubed roots. And people, it is the numbers inside the houses. It's the numbers inside the parentheses that are going to be key to doing the factoring of cubes. So let's look at a few of them. One. Well, we found out most recently that one was not only a perfect square, but one is a perfect cube. The cubed root of 1 is 1, because if you take 1 and take it to the third power, that's 1 times 1 times 1, and you're back to the perfect cube of 1. So you want to know him. The cubed root of 1 is 1. The cubed root of 8, we've already discussed it, 2. 2 cubed back to 8, and so on. Notice how these perfect cubes increase almost exponentially. They increase mightily from 8. The next one, 27. I already showed that here. 27, its cubed root, 3. 3 cubed. 64. Notice how it's jumped from 27. 64 is 4 to the third. 4 times 4 times 4, 64, and so on. I'll just kind of show the rest. 125, it's a perfect cube. It's 5 cubed. Perfect cube, 6 cubed. 7 cubed, 8 cubed, 9 cubed, and I'll stop with this one, 10 cubed. Now, out of these first 10, for the exam that will be upcoming and that we will send you an email to guide you a bit, as far as these perfect cubes up here that you see in black to the left of the equal sign, you'll need to be aware of the following. I don't want to mark up a lot of things right here. You'll need to be aware of the following. You should know that 1 is a cube. 1 cubed. You should know that 8 is a perfect cube. 27, 64, and 125. You should know these five and memorize these five. You do not need to worry about for any exam 216, 
343, 512, or 729. You don't need to worry about any of those. For an exam, you might see it on a homework, but you don't need to worry about any of these on an exam. But yes for a thousand. Why? Because a thousand has three zeros in it, and that indicates the number of factors of ten that you have. You have ten to the third. So we ought to know the cube root of a thousand is ten, and we should know the cube roots of these one, two, three, four, and five. We should be aware of those. We should know those. We also need to be aware of perfect cubes in terms of the powers of a variable. Now, I've already spoken and alluded to this. I mentioned, and I'll repeat it here again. Whenever you're looking at the power of a variable, if the exponent If the exponent on the power is evenly divisible by 3, 3 is divided by 3, 6 is evenly divisible by 3, yes, yes, yes. Any power of any lettered variable in which the exponent is evenly divisible by 3 represents a perfect cube. Now I left some of these blank, we're going to fill them in. x to the third is its root, its cubed root is x to the third. Or it's x to the three divided by three, which is x to the first x to the sixth is a cube. What cubed? What cubed gives us x to the sixth? x to the sixth divided by three. x to the sixth divided by three. x squared. x to the second to the third gives us x to the sixth x to the ninth is a cube. Why? Because 9 is divisible by the cubed symbol of 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3 x to the third. x to the third is the cube root of x to the ninth. x to the fifteenth its cube root x to the fifteen divided by 3 x to the fifth. x to the twenty-fourth its cubed root, x to the 24 divided by 3, x to the 8th. Now people, before I leave this region, as I in a moment move over to this left-hand side and we discuss why the sum or the difference of two cubes represent a special factorization, and then we move into the process of getting the factors, this is what's going to be key. What's going to be key in us getting the factors is making sure that we know the cubed roots of either the numbers that we're going to be looking at or the powers of the variables that we're going to be looking at. It's going to be important to know these. It's going to be important to be able to identify the cubed roots. I'm going to give you a word. I'm going to be making use of this word. You would not even expect to see this. These roots that we're identifying right here, they're going to be referred to as the guys. 
They're going to be referred to as the guys in a moment. Okay. Now here's statement number one that we want to give. Here is one specific reason why when you're factoring the sum or the difference of two cubes that it is a special factorization because this is a truth about the sum or the difference of two cubes. They will always factor to a binomial factor and a trinomial factor. When we are factoring the sum or the difference of two cubes, this one, this one, or others, one of your factors will be a binomial and its next door neighbor will be a trinomial. Now that's unique. That's special. That's unique. So we want to remem remember that. Excuse me. <clears throat> now, there are two major groups of steps that we have to follow to come up with the binomial factor and the trinomial factor. I'm just going to read the statement that we're going to have to follow to get the binomial factor. And then I'm going to stop and we're going to define what's meant by the guys. To get the binomial factor, to get the binomial factor, the slogan says this. It's something that I came up with. I, I, I came up with it. The slogan says this. It's the guys without the cubes. To get the binomial factor, it's the guys without the cubes. Now I'm going to erase this information up here. And we're going to copy down the first problem that we're going to do. I'm even going to erase the by and the try part right there. I've already spoken that. We're going to start with this right here. Okay. That's going to work out just fine. You'll have to practice, but if you practice, it is going to go. Now let's start where we should always start. We start with GCF. The answer is no. They don't both have Ks. That coefficient is 1. They have nothing in common. Next question. Does it have four terms? No. Next question. Does it have three terms? No. Next question. Is it a binomial? You bet your boots. Now, the question is going to be this. We now have two different kinds of binomials. It either is the difference of two squares, the difference of two cubes, or the sum of two cubes. Well, it's not a difference at all. It's not a difference so it can't be the difference of two squares. So you can forget conjugates. It appears to be the sum of two cubes. What's the clue? Well, that's a sum. And he is staring right at you. He's a cube. The exponent is three. The three is the symbol for a cube. That's a cube. And so is 27. 27 is 3 cubed. We're going to be using him in a moment. Now, we have to get our guys first. Then we will do what this says to get our binomial. Now, before we come down and do our guys, here's what I want you to do. We already know that there's no GCF. It doesn't have 4. It doesn't have 3. 
It is a binomial. It is not the difference of two squares. It's the sum of two cubes. Folks, I want you to do this. Leave some space right here. It's going to be kind of a work zone. It's going to be kind of a work zone right here. Come down a ways, maybe right about here, and make the structure of a by. There's the by. And next door to it, a tri. The binomial will be going in there, and the trinomial will be going in there. Okay. To get the binomial factor, to get him, the slogan says it's the guys without the cubes. Here's how we get our guys. Come to each one of the terms of our binomial. Start with the first one and ask this question of the first one. Hey, first one, are you a cube? Answer, yes. What is the cubed root of k cubed? In other words, what has to be taken to the third power that will give us k cubed? K. And how do we get that? Put a parenthesis in this work zone. Bring down your base of K. Put an exponent of 3 on the outside. K cubed is a cube. What cubed? Well, K has got to be cubed. We put the K inside the house and we put the cube symbol out. That's the same as him. Now I'm letting you know, this base of K, he's called guy number one. The cube symbol is guy number two. Next thing, bring down the addition sign right here. That addition sign is guy number three. Now to the next two guys. Ask the same question of the last term. Hey, 27, I think you're a cube. I am. We are three cubed. And we express it like this. You are actually identifying, excuse me, you're actually identifying the cube root of 27 to be 3. 3 to the third matches him. This is guy number 4, and this is guy number 5. So let's repeat. You go to the first term and you ask the question, are you a cube? If the answer is yes, you ask yourself and answer this. What base value, when taken to the third power, will give k third? k to the third power. Well, it's k to the third. Bring down the plus sign. Ask the same question of 27. What base value, taken to the third power, will equal 27? Well, that would be 3 to the third. There's a total of five guys up here. One, two, three, four, five. There will always be five guys. Now, two of those five guys up there are special. Notice the exponent here and the exponent here, they're little cubes. That's the second guy and that's the fifth guy. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. These two guys right here have alias names. They're symbols for cubes. They're symbols for cubes. Now, 
Now we're going to respond to this statement right here and write our binomial. To get the binomial factor, it says this. It's the guys, meaning we want the guys, but without the cubes. We do not want the cubes. We want the guys, but without the cubes. Come up here to our five guys. We want all of the guys up here, but not, without, but not the cubes. We don't want this three, and we don't want that three, because their alias names are called cubes. They're the symbol for cubes. We want the rest of the guys. We want the guys up here, but not the cubes. We do not want these, so we'll X them out. We don't want them. We want what's left. Folks, look what's left. K plus 3 binomial. Okay. Now we are finished with guys. We are not going to talk about guys anymore. The guys are only used to get the binomial factor. Now the trinomial factor, we're going to honor these three steps. Here's the three steps to get the trinomial factor. Square the first term of our binomial. Square first term of binomial. So let's go to the first term and square it. Take it to the second power. When we square k, we'll get k squared. We're going to put it in the first position of our trinomial right here. Next step to get the trinomial factor, square last term of binomial. Square the last term. He'll be positive. Just like the first one was positive. Square the last term. Square the last term of this binomial. Take positive 3. Square it. 3 to the second. Positive 9. It goes in the last position. And now to get the middle. Let's follow what this bottom statement says. I tried to write bullet words. Opposite product goes in the middle. Opposite product. We do this. We go to both terms of the binomial. Product means multiply. Always does. We multiply these two terms. 3 times k. That's the product. And then do what this first word says. Change this answer to its opposite. Opposite, their product, goes in the middle. Get their product, 3K. Change that answer, change that product to its opposite. And transfer him to the middle. And we have it. There's the buy, there's the try. Now let me mention this before we erase and go on to the second one, because you just obviously, you don't do one of these. You do a few. But let me say this right now. The trinomial factor that you get, it will never be able to be further factored. You'll never have to worry about further factoring it. He'll be prime. He's done, and he's done. Now let's do a second. 
Don't worry about your question right now. Don't worry about if you're saying something like, I don't like it. I'm not going to be able to get it. You will. Number two. 8M to the third plus 125N to the third. Now people, again, it's a brand new polynomial expression. So let's stay with the steps. Step one, GCF. They don't both have Ns. They don't both have Ms. The smallest coefficient is 8, and 8 will not divide into 125 evenly. It can't, because 8 is only made up of 2s. 2, 2, 2. There's no 2 in 125, so there's no GCF. Next question. Four terms? No. Three terms? No. Binomial? Yes. Is it a difference of squares? It can't be. That's not a difference. And those aren't squares. They're cubes. So it can't be the difference of squares. Then the only thing that is left for it to be would be the sum of two cubes. And that's exactly what we have. So, work zone, down here. Bye. Try. To get our by, we need the guys. Now here's a shortcut to get this rolling. Come over here. Ask this question. Hey you. Are you a cube? Well, eight. You are. And m to the third. You are. Make a house. Put the cube guy out. Eight is two cubed, and m to the third is m cubed. So the cubed root of eight m cubed is the quantity of two m cubed. If you take the two and cube it, 2 times 2 times 2, 8. If you then follow that up by taking m and cubing it, you're at m cubed. Bring down the plus sign, he's important. He's our third guy. Here's the first guy. There's the second guy. There's the third guy. I'm going to get this one ready right now. There's the fifth guy. We need the fourth. Ask it of him. 125. Yes, I remember talking about you. You're a cube. You're 5 cubed. And n to the third is n to the third. Guy number one. Guy two. Guy three. Guy four. Guy five. You'll always have five guys in your work zone. Now let's do the binomial step. It's the guys up there. People, it's the guys up there. It's those five guys up there, but not the cubes. Not this guy. Not this guy. Without the cubes. It's the leftovers that we want. And that will give us the binomial. 2m plus 5n. There's the by. Now let's get the try. Again, it is poetry. It does sound like a, a rhythm. To get the trinomial, it's these words. Square first. It'll go there. Square last. It'll go there. Opposite their product is going to go in the middle. Square first term of binomial. Square 
the 2m, that's the first term. That means we have to square the 2, and we have to square the m. That takes care of that one. Next step, square the last term. He'll be positive. Square the last term. Square the positive 5. And square the n. And now the middle. Opposite their product is going to go in the middle. You get the product of these two terms first. You multiply these two terms together first. Change sign. Opposite their product is going in the middle. Now I'm going to follow the alphabet. 5n times 2m, a positive 10mn. That's their product. I multiplied them. 10mn, but it says opposite that, opposite him, opposite this product, opposite of the positive, a negative 10mn. And there's the by, and there's the try. And people, you can check it. If you multiply this binomial times this trinomial and begin by letting the 2m be the distributor over that trinomial, and then this be the distributor over that trinomial, and combine the like terms, there will be a lot of things that will cancel out, and you'll end up getting 8m cubed plus 125n cubed. Needless to say, you've already heard and found out we need to be aware of some of these cubes. You need to be able to look at 27, and when you see 27, you've got to be able to say, it's a cube, it's 3 cubed. 125, it's 5 cubed. 1,000, 10 cubed. We've got to make sure that we are aware of that. Now let's go to a difference. The song is the same, the rule is the same. Let's go to this. Step number one, ask, see if it's got a GCF. Should have noticed something that gives us a hint that it's going to have to. There's a cube symbol. Its coefficient is a three. Three is not a cube. There's no perfect cube up there named three. The symbol for a cube is a three. But this coefficient of 3 is not a cube. So it's likely that there is a GCF. 3 goes into itself, and 3 must go into 192, because if we add these digits up, 1 plus 9 is 10, and 10 plus 2 is 12. And since 3 goes into the sum total of those digits 12, 3 has to go into 192. Pull out a 3. Make a house. divide. 3k cubed divided by 3. Negative divided by 3. I believe 192 divided by 3 will give us this. Now, when you're looking at this binomial that's inside this house, it appears to be the difference two cubes. It cannot be the difference of two squares because that exponent is not even. It's a three. It's a cube. And so is 64. So let's leave a little work zone right here and come down and make the by. And the try. Do this first before we do anything here. Take this GCF of 3, very important. Take this GCF of 3, put it right here. So we don't forget, it's part of our answer. Now the work zone. Make a house, pull a cube. 
bring down the minus sign, make a second house, put a little cube. They're going to get X'd out in a moment, but we've got to ask a question. Go to the first term, right here, and ask of him, are you a cube? I am. I'm this. Are you a cube? I am a cube. Here's our five guys. One, two, three, four, five. To get the binomial, it's the guys that I want without the cubes. I don't want the cubes. I want the remaining guys, K minus four. Square first. Square first. First term of the binomial. Square first. Now be very careful here. Square last. Why did I write these? Because whenever you square anything, it's always positive. Square last. You're squaring negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4. Opposite product going in the middle. Multiply these two terms together, get their product. Negative 4 times k. That's their product. Now change sign opposite that product. We got their product. Now opposite him. And with the GCF, the whole kit and caboodle is done. Now we'll do one more so you'll have four of them registered. This one had a GCF. put this one right here on an exam, but we'll go to this. And then we'll add just a little bit more of a flavor to it. Just a little bit more of a flavor. GCF. Well, they don't both have powers of T and they don't both have powers of W, but it doesn't take too much looking at it to see that this coefficient is even, and so is he. So they at least have a common factor of two. Now I realize that 216 and 1,000 are very, very large numbers. They both have a 2. Let's just not settle in on 2 unless we know after we've tested a few things that 2 is going to be the GCF. At least 2 is a common factor. Let's try 4. You can forget about 3 because 3 doesn't go into 1,000. Let's see if 4 goes into both. Well, 4 will go into 1,000. If you divide 4 into 1,000, you're going to get 250. 4 will go into 216 as well, if you divide it. Maybe 4 will end up to be that GCF. But we'll try this as well. And you see, you don't need to worry about trying 6, because 6 is made up of 2 times 3. 6 has a factor of 3 in it, and there's no 3 in 1,000. 
Let's try eight. I think eight will go into both of them. And I believe that eight would be the greatest common factor of it. Eight would be the GCF for these. Real, real quick so we're, we don't get frustrated. Number one, I would never give you a problem with the sizes of those coefficients. But something just popped into my mind as I was testing some of these numbers, and I want to be fair with you people, and I, I don't think I'm going to run out of time on this machine, but I want to be fair. If you want to make sure that you come up with the correct greatest common factors for numbers with the size of 216 and 1,000, let me just share something right here. This is not going to put, put us out of touch right here. The little device. Put 216 right here. Put 1,000 right next to it. And we're going to start with the very first prime number. The first prime number is 2. We already know that 2 is going to go into both of them. Put a 2 right out here. We're going to divide 2 into each one of those numbers. 2 will divide into 216 108 times. 2 will divide into 1,000. Look at your brand new numbers after we've divided by 2. They're still both even. We'll divide these two by 2. Put another 2 right here. Divide it. 2 into 108. 2 into 500. People, brand new numbers. They're both even. That means 2 will divide into both of them again. Divide. Divide. Okay. We're down to 27 and 125. We can no longer use 2. 2 will not divide into either of them. Won't go into both of them. Go to the next prime, which is 3. 3 will divide into 27, but it will not divide into 125. You'll have a remainder. Go to the next prime, which is 5. 5 will go into 125, but it won't divide into 27. And you can try any other prime number and it will not divide into either 27 or 125. You take these numbers off to the side that have worked. And you multiply them together. And whatever your answer is, that'll be your GCF and that'll be 8. Let's pull out the 8. That's going to leave us with this. 8 into 216, I think that's going to give us 27 T cubed. Negative, I believe 1,000 divided by 8 will give us a negative 125 W to the 6th. Now let me erase this stuff right here. Let this be the work zone. Come down. Bring down that GCF of 8. Make the buy. Make the try. Got to get our guys. Twenty-seven T to the third is a cube. We have to find out what must be cubed to get 27t cubed. Well, the cubed root of 27, 3, along with the t. This one. 125 is 5 cubed. And w to the 6th, take the 6, divide it by 3. Take the 9, divide it by 3. Take the 15, divide it by 3. People, take the 6, divide it by 3. All right. 
guy one, two, three, four, five. It's the guys without the cubes. Don't want him, don't want him. We want the rest. 3t minus 5w squared. All right, let's get the trinomial. Square first. Square the first term. Square the 3. Square the t. Square the 3. Square the t. Square the last. Square the negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5. Square the w to the second. Take w to the second and square it. It means this. That will give us w to the fourth. And now, opposite product goes in the middle. Multiply these two terms of the binomial. Get their product. A negative 5 times a positive 3, negative 15, TW squared or W squared T, it doesn't make any difference. That's their product. Now change to opposite. Change that monomial to its opposite. To a positive 15 W squared T, and we would have our factorization. Now, as I come back and look at you as we're winding down this, because I know this took a long time right here to do the cubes, there is no doubt about it. If we were to be honest with one another, out of all of the different factoring techniques that we've talked about, from the greatest common factor to grouping to the trinomials and to the binomials, I would probably say, that the sum or the difference of two cubes would be the one that you would need to spend more time on and more practice on being able to deliver out the factors. I believe that would be the time-consuming one that we'd have to go over because it's, it's one that is not as common as the others. It's not seen as much as the others but you will be tested upon it. You have now been given all of the techniques of factoring. 7, 1, 7, 2, 7, 3, 7, 4. Now, we won't do anything more today. I'm, I'm talking to you on Saturday. We won't be doing anything on Sunday. Monday and Tuesday, it will be the objective to finish Chapter 7. And I'll be sending an email giving you an idea of when the next exam will come about, which will be dominated by Chapter 7. It'll be dominated by that chapter. So try to give yourself some time and as well some time with your family and some rest. And I know you have other classes that you've got to do and your job responsibilities and everything. But we will reconnect. Send me an email for the help that you might need, and we will uh, take care of it. You have a good Saturday evening and a good blessed Sunday as well. It's always appreciated that you listen to me. I appreciate that. You have a good day. Thank you.